Hey there, and thanks for tuning in to Pips and Chits. My name is Jason, and I'd like to welcome you to my inaugural painting episode here on my channel. Um, now, I know there's a lot of channels out there on YouTube to watch with many talented individuals uh, whose expertise and skill is much greater than mine, but I wanted to go ahead and dip my feet into the water and uh, kind of spotlight my own uh, occasional series on painting. A uh, little background, I've been painting miniatures for a few years now in my spare time. And uh, every time I pick up the brush, it's a kind of a new learning experience, or at least I learn something new. And uh, truth be told, I watch other channels all the time to, uh, you know, uh, develop new techniques and get ideas. And I've come quite a way over um, my initial paint jobs, and there's no shame in admitting that. I used to use some pretty cheap paint and cheap brushes. And believe me, I had no idea when I first started what a wet palette was or terms like xenophil highlighting or wet blending and uh, everything else in between. Well, anyway, today I hope this is a treat for you with uh, Halloween coming up. Uh, I'm going to be painting the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, it's from the 2019 Ravensburger won the five player tabletop game entitled Horrified. In this game, um, players take on the classic monsters from the Universal Pictures Menagerie. If you like this episode, go ahead and leave me a comment below uh, or like. And, uh, you know, I might go ahead and do others in the series, including uh, Frankenstein, uh, Dracula, uh, the Mummy, the Wolfman, the Invisible Man, and um, I think even the Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, I would consider this series to be kind of beginner to intermediate because overall the sculpts here are pretty fairly easy and the poses aren't overly intricate like uh, so many other minis out there today. I won't be having to get uh, brushes into a lot of hard places. There's not a lot of you know major nooks and crannies on these uh, miniatures here and the you know from the era here, the these monsters coming from the 1950s, the color palette and scheme is 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 a little bit more simplistic than you know some of the futuristic minis uh, with so many other games. I'm going to be using um, a combination of both uh, Citadel's new contrast line of paints, and this should cut down a lot of time and do most of the heavy lifting for us here. But I'm also going to incorporate some more traditional acrylic paints from uh, Army Painter and Vallejo and probably uh, Citadel's uh, core line themselves. And these are going to be more for the specific details like eyes and claws, uh, jewelry, glasses. And um, I've got a couple ideas about uh, making the uh, bases pop as well. And while these miniatures might not be entering any contest soon, I hope you agree that the little extra effort that we put in here is going to make them uh, stand out. So let's talk about the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty simple figure here. Uh, probably the easiest of the bunch to paint. Uh, he's not wearing any clothes and it's pretty much a uniform color here. Uh, the monster card that came with the game here just shows some artwork from the chest up. And we can assume since he's an amphibian, he's more or less uh, a green color. I did a little research online and found some color promotional posters when the movie was released back in uh, February of 1954. And, um, you know, some of the colors there are a little exaggerated. Um, the creature's scheme is kind of a dark forest green. And uh, I personally think that uh, for this paint job here, this uh, orc flesh from uh, Citadel's contrast line is going to do a really good job of that. But to break it up a little bit, I'm going to add, uh, mind you, these aren't mixed very well yet. i got to mix them so there might be a little separation here. But uh, I'm going to add some Plague Bear's flesh green as, as well to this. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it or a yellowish hue. Uh, we'll just be brushing on some selective areas uh, over the orc flesh uh, green here, and that just break up the monotony of uh, a solid uniform green color. Um, 
you don't have to go green too. You know, actually before I even bought these contrast paints here, uh, I was actually thinking about doing a, um, you know, even a purplish color, like the same way that this uh, miniature was molded in the plastic. Uh, so you can be creative, it's up to you. And just for comparison, uh, I did some a Mansions of Madness one, uh, a deep one, uh, which is a similar type figure, if you can imagine that. And here I used, uh, if I can show you, uh, I used uh, contrast paints of ter tarragon turquoise and uh, Achillean green. And I thought this combination came out pretty good and it wouldn't look so bad on the creature as well. Now he's really shiny because I added a coat of Ard Coat on it. That's the Citadel's glass varnish. And uh, I didn't really thin it down at all. I didn't mix any water or medium with it. So he became uh, ultra shiny. Uh, so with the creature though, I might dull that down a little bit. And uh, where I was mentioning earlier about using acrylic paints, as you can see here, I actually used some. Uh, uh, I don't know if this is focusing very well or not. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, well, his teeth here. Uh, yeah, it's just I'm sorry. I might be too close to the camera. His teeth are actually I'm use I used uh, acrylic paint on here, and uh, I I kind of like it, but. On this cre on the creature of the Black Lagoon, uh, his teeth are so small, and when this figure sits down on the table, you notice how his head is tilted down a little bit. Chances are you're not going to see the fangs, so uh, we might pass it all together. Um, I'm going to probably use some matte black for the claws. The mouth is a little questionable too. Uh, posters online show the creature with you know big bright red lips and I think this is might be a little cartoony for this uh, but maybe if I want uh, we'll make that judgment call later but I might mix up some dark red like corn red and desaturate it a little bit uh, with some black or maybe uh, some green and then you know maybe even turn it into a glaze and just touch them the lips up a little bit just to give a hint of color some red color in there but it won't be, it won't pop out and be too overly cartoony. Um, so in preparation, one thing I haven't talked about here is preparation. Well, this is the mini out of the box. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wash it up. And while I'm doing that, just to cut down on some of the other videos in this series, I'm going to wash all the cre you know, all the other monsters at the same time with a little soap and water. And that's just to get the uh, releasing agents off the mini from the molding process. And that'll help the primers uh, stick a little bit better. Um, I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and I'm going to, you know, just scrape away. Actually, this one's really good. There's not a lot of mold lines on this mini at all. But generally, uh, you know, a lot of times you, what you want to do is with, with an X-Acto knife, you want to you, you examine, you know, where the, where the mold lines are and kind of scrape them off. He's got some very, very tiny ones under the arm. Uh, those will be really uh, easy to take off. And even if you didn't take them off, just by putting them him on the table, you're, you're never going to see him anyway. But um, And then finally, we're going to go ahead and prime these. And because I'm using contrast paints, I have uh, Citadels. Uh, I have two different ones here. I have Gray Seer and uh, Wraithbone. The Wraithbone obviously is a little bit more white, might have a little maybe a hint of yellow, just a, a real, you know, maybe even beige, I guess. It's going to make the colors pop a little bit brighter, and uh, they're going to have an overall warmer tone, I think. Um, this is good for um, some of the creatures, like the mummy that, you know, we're going to paint bandages on, and then probably like the Bride of Frankenstein, because her dress is is all white, and I don't want to paint a white over a, uh, you know, a gray color. However, um, there's nothing wrong with the grays here as well. Uh, you can paint them with gray. They, they, the minis overall, the contrast paint just might show up, a, a, you know, a, a shade darker. Uh, actually, and as for matter of a comparison, this, the, these were done, these deep ones were done with grays here, here. And uh, they turned out okay, but if I turned, if I did them with Wraithbone, they might be a tad bit brighter. Um, even if you have Grace here, here, 
you can always buy a pot of paint of wraith bone and then do some things like it's probably not a good example on on this figure here but maybe on like dracula you could paint his face up with uh wraith bone straight out of the pot and that'll make uh his colors pop a little bit more uh, like on the flesh and stuff i don't think it's a big deal like on frankenstein he's predominantly black so i think grace here would be just fine uh to prime him in and then um anyway uh we'll, we'll let that dry i'm going to do that off camera here and outside it's a great day for me to do that and then finally we'll talk about the bases now i've got some ideas about the bases for uh, this guy in particular i'm thinking about doing a textured base of sterling mud maybe uh, add some tufts of swamp and then right up the front maybe kind of do like a crescent half moon maybe do some Nurgle's Rot. It's kind of, when it dries, it's kind of got a little shiny, swampy uh, 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 theme to it. Might look like he's either walking out of the water or into the water uh, of some some back bayou swamp. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get it wet again after, after we seal these up with some dull coat. We'll go back in with some uh, gloss varnish too, some thin down gloss varnish and return back some of that shiny, wet look to it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a break right now. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, clean these up and prime them. And we'll be back uh, here in a few seconds. Okay, folks, welcome back. As you can see, we've got our creature primed in Wraithbone Primer. Let it go ahead and dry for a good uh, 15 to 20 minutes and placed it in my little Citadel holder here. Costs about $12 or $15 for this uh, holder and it's spring loaded. Um, it's sometimes very hard with an aerosol can to get 100% coverage, especially uh, underneath and in some of the uh, deep recesses here, but that's okay. Um, we just need a good 95% coverage. Uh, the, a lot of people make the mistake of they, they're so focused on getting the primer on everything that they allow the, the paint to pool and uh, in certain areas and it gets away, clogs up those recesses and, and you see the details start to diminish there. So uh, if, if you see a little bit of the original purple pulling through, uh, that's okay. Uh, anyway, I got my brush here. I'm using a 2-0 uh, transition brush, uh, brush. I got this off of Amazon. Uh, it's got decent enough bristles here that it's going to hold, uh, uh, you know, a good amount of the contrast paint, uh, not too, th too much. And it also, it's not too small that where, where I'm going to constantly dipping it in. I've got a little bit of water just to, um, wash my brush off if I need to and a paper towel here. And, uh, what I'm going to do next is we're going to break out this, uh, orc flesh here. And we're going to mix it up really good. Uh, you know, the, sometimes when these paints set, the stuff that makes this contrast paint, the special medium, will will sink down here to the bottom. So you definitely got to give it a good shake. Um, you can buy a stainless steel agitator balls on Amazon. Generally, for a, a few dollars, you get a hundred of them. I actually don't have any in these ones yet, but I, I use them a lot in my uh, acrylic paints and my metallic paints. But anyway, we're going to give this a, a good mix and we're going to crack this puppy open. And what you're going to see here is I'm going to get some on my brush, a good dollop of it here. And we're going to go ahead and just going to work on this and we're going to move the move it around quite a bit so we don't want it to pool up in in too many areas it's okay i'm paint i'm going to paint the whole figure in this right now and when it dries we're going to let it dry for a good 10 to 15 minutes again before we come back and we put in the uh, next coat which would be this uh, plague bear flesh and as you can see uh the contrast here is doing its job it's getting into those uh, little uh, recesses there. The raised ed edges are, you know, turning up white. The the deep recesses are are where the paint is going to be pooling, is going to be getting uh, that deep, rich, dark green color. And we're going to get this all in up in here. We'll just keep constantly moving, moving the paint around. Oh. 
mix it up a little bit more. Get a nice dollop on there on my brush. Um, get it on the miniature. Make sure we give it a good 360 degree coating here. Well, actually this brush isn't holding as much paint as I thought it was going to. The next time I, I do something like that, I might have to get a brush with slightly more um, bristles on there or a little bit larger brush to hold more. Just keep moving this around. So we don't want anything to dry so we don't get any major brush strokes. Uh, but as you can see here, it's actually doing a really pretty cool job of uh, bringing those details out. And make sure that we get, dip it, dip it back down in there. Oops, did I get enough in there? I don't know if I got enough in there. And, and we're not going to worry too much about the details like the claws and stuff like that. I mean, we'll paint over those later. We just want to slather on this contrast here and uh, let the gel medium uh, dry and, uh, you know, find its places. Uh, the base, you know, we'll definitely don't worry about a little bit of that spillover onto the base. That's, that's all going to get cleaned up later when we put the, the Sterling mud on there and some of the other like th ideas that I have but basically just just keep rotating around make sure that we get as much of the white not showing through as possible if you ever see it pooling around like it is kind of a little bit by the ankles and you don't like that go ahead I mean this doesn't dry instantly so you can grab it, move it around a little bit more. Uh, it's looking a little light here, so I'm gonna go back and add. But wow, look at look at can you see how much detail is coming out with that contrast? I'm really digging that. Get right into the toes there again. We're gonna be painting the claws maybe with black later, but I want to make sure that everything is covered. So I'll get some more, more paint here. Uh, we'll, we'll tackle this hand now and the arm and make sure that we get underneath here. I'll see if I, oh, there's a little white still underneath here. Make sure I get all that, get under the armpit. And giving it once over, make sure I got everything on the legs covered. Looks like I I do. And as this dries, it'll it'll kind of blend a little bit more. I'm not too worried because it's a uh, viscous state right now, and it, it'll find as it dries, it'll get into other areas that uh, might have missed, and you know, kind of even out so it doesn't look like it's too thick in one area and too thin in another. So, yeah, we'll move this around some more and get the top of the head. Okay. And I think maybe one more little dollop here. Actually, as you can see, I haven't even dipped it, my brush into the water yet or even had to use the paper towel. And if you ever did screw up, uh, as long as you have, you know, if it bled over into another part that you didn't want painted, uh, you can always break break out that pot of paint, um, the uh, wraith bone or gray sear, and with a brush, go ahead and paint those sections over and let them dry and then retouch them back up. At this point here, I'm, I think I, oh, there's a little part right there on the top of his hands. Right there, get still a little bit of white showing. I'm kind of giving it a once over. Yeah, we've got a little bit right here. 
um, a little, a little thin underneath the, the neck here. Not too worried about the mouth. Again, make sure we get, get it under the armpits. Kind of looking through everything. Oop, there's a little, there's a little bit right there. And it looks like we've got pretty good coverage at this point. I, I, th oop, there's a little bit left right where the sun don't shine and got that covered and now at this point we want to make sure that this uh, contrast paint completely dries before we go on to the next coat so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn off the camera right now and we'll be back in a little bit and go ahead and continue okay folks we're back and i've let this uh, dry for about 20-25 minutes right now and uh, I think it came out pretty darn good so um, you can see the contrast uh, really did its job there uh, we've got some dark right under the arms and in the um, in the bottom area there but a lot of the details came out pretty nicely at this point you know I was saying earlier about uh, one uniform color so I think we're going to break it up a little bit and uh, use this very sparingly. We're going to use some uh, Plague Bear Flesh. And we're just going to go around this, uh, uh, a couple of the, the palms, maybe on the hand, maybe a little bit on top of the head, and basically this middle chest area here. Uh, just to break up the color a little bit, uh, introduce a little bit of some yellowish hues in there. And then... Um, once that dries, I think off camera, just so I don't bore you to death here, I'm going to go ahead and paint the nails black. Um, probably the claws as well. And then uh, might put down a base coat uh, for, the, um, for the base itself and draw in kind of a, a random half moon here. And uh, I'll show you that on the next take. I think uh, the base coat will probably be a dark brown, maybe like Rhinex hide from Citadel or uh, Dryad Bark, uh, something that's going to make the green really stand out, I think. Uh, also, depending on how it goes, uh, I might experiment, like I said, with the red wash. I, I don't know if I'm going to do a red wash and thin it down a little bit, or I'm going to... Um, use some corn red and kind of desaturate it a little bit and paint a little bit around the lips. But anyway, before, well, let's remember to shake up our contrast paint here. And we're gonna get a little bit of this uh, Plague Bears out. So I'm just gonna use just a tiny bit, see how that looks here. Uh, like so I'm gonna start maybe by the hands a little bit, just introduce a little bit right in in the hand area um, let's see get a little bit more of that get right on the top of the head uh, we're not going to cover the whole model up we just want to uh, just introduce some random uh, things here get a little bit of that yellow in there just to break up the color a little bit it's kind of hard to see right now i think when it dries it might be a little bit better I'm going to get a little bit, maybe just, uh, ran, you know, a couple little drops on the knees here. Uh, and uh, maybe just a tiny bit on, uh, on, the, on the shoulders, just kind of some, some highlights. Again, uh, when, it, when this dries, it, it, you know, it'll add a little bit, a tiny bit of a yellow tint to it, uh, to the overall model. And... Uh, just for a little bit of interest and in breaking up that uh, green. So uh, we'll be back in a few and we'll check on the progress. Thanks. Okay, so we're back a little bit and let me show you what we've done so far. Um, as far as the base, I know the base looks a little rough right now. That's okay. I'm just blocking in some colors. It's going to look a lot better when um, we add some of the texture effects and uh, the Nurgle's rock. But anyway, the base is... Uh, dryad bark, uh, probably about two thin layers of this. I, I did have a hard time with it. Uh, it's really hot in my area today and my air conditioning is running. And I think that's kind of, 
unfortunately kind of made my paints dry faster than I would like today. But anyway, this, uh, the brown is a dryad bark and I kind of freehand traced in some uh, layer Elysian uh, green. Again, uh, these are just undercoats. We'll put special effects on here that uh, later on that'll make this look a heck of a lot cleaner. As far as uh, our creature goes, I painted the nails with um, aqua color. Uh, it's actually, it's tar black by Ravel. And uh, let me tell you, I got this as a free paint, but this is the worst case design I've ever used in a paint. It, it is this really weird uh, box that opens up at, at an angle. Let's, I'll show you real quick. You have to turn it and then this is the pot and it's very difficult sometimes to get back on and it has to be really clean but i was using my uh, small detail brush to try to get the uh, the nails done down here uh here in in his claws and let me tell you it was just uh my paint was drawing uh really fast on my brush i had to keep dipping it in water and doing it over and over again uh, so let's talk about the eyes for a second. I started with a little army uh, painter, Matt White, here that I uh, added some water to, thinned it down, and used that as the base coat. The eyes were kind of nice and big on this model, so I was just able to uh, plop two, two whites in. And when that dried, I like to go in with a little, again, uh, Citadel Glaze. This is Lamenter's Yellow. And just to turn that uh, white into a bright yellow, that, that really makes the other colors uh, come through. So finally, the orange on here for kind of the pupil or the next part of the eye was this uh, Chimera. Um, this is just pure orange from Chimera. Very nice paints, very uh, high pigmentation. I really like it. The, the bottles, if you can hear, uh, have an actual agitator inside as well. So that's very nice. And then finally, the lips. Uh, I did try our Army Painter Red Wash, and I wasn't very happy with the results at all. So I ended up going back and taking some corn red, mixing in a little bit of this black almost to a one-to-one -one ratio, and then adding some water to it and uh, desaturating it. And all I did was the very, very bottom of, of his lip there. And I don't even know if you could see it on camera or not but uh trust me his his lip does have a little red color and what i like it's not too cartoony uh it doesn't it, i mean you can see it but it doesn't pop out so much that uh, it distracts distracts the uh person uh also don't know if you can tell too but that plague bears uh flesh had dried uh might be hard to see on camera but it has uh, added a little bit of a yellow tint to that center section there of his thorax and chest i'm pretty happy about so our next step really and uh is to put on the basing material itself and uh we'll go from there and stop back in in a few thanks Okay, everyone, thanks for sticking with me so far. This is, should be the last cut. Just want to talk about some of the finishing touches here. Talked earlier about the base and how I was going to um, go ahead and use some texturing. And uh, we used uh, Citadel's Texture uh, Sterling Mud and let that uh, dry for a good amount of time there. And then uh, just to bring out some of the details there before we put on any of the uh, additional landscaping, I went and used a wash of Army Painter Strong Tone. It's not as dark as a non oil. It's probably closer to a, an Agrath's Ur or a very dark Agrath's Earth shade. It's got a little bit of brown in there, but hinting towards the uh, black. Uh, using a dry brush, I used a Citadel. This is the first time I actually used Citadel uh, dry niblet green here. And some of the raised edges, it might be hard to see here. I'll see if I can get close enough. But I uh, used a dry brush before, again, before I put on some of the uh, landscaping there. We got some uh, niblet green down there to uh, give a little bit of a, uh, an effect of thinking it's from the swamp. Then down in front here, if you remember, I painted Elysian Green, which is a layer. But then I went ahead and topped it off with this other Citadel technical paint. It's Nurgle's Rot. 
And as you can see, it dries with a very uh, shiny sheen to it, kind of a, a very good swamp effect, if you will. You could use this for uh, on other monsters like Puss and Boils and, uh, you know, maybe if you're doing some uh, comedic painting, some um, uh, runny nose, if you catch my drift there. And finally, overall, to give uh, the creature his wet look, I went ahead and uh, used a, a technical art coat. This is a gloss uh, finish, but um, what I did actually is, is I thinned this down quite a bit. I didn't want it super shiny, so it was it's actually two parts water to one part art coat. And um, how I kind of measure that out is I actually I have a dropper here that uh, I put in two drops of water off in a little paint bowl and one drop of this art coat. Mix that up and using a uh, thick uh, brush that you would normally use for a wash, I went ahead and uh, put that one coat all over. And uh, when it dries, it should give a, a, a nice uh, wet sheen to it, but not overly glossy. So anyway, uh, let me bring him up for a, uh, let me adjust the light here. For a final view, this is uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon for Horrified using a combination of contrast paints and um, uh, traditional uh, acrylic paints. And I know this video went a little long. Again, it is my first time uh, recording a paint video and I'm kind of learning from it. I think uh, if you like this series, please, or if you like this episode, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and uh, send me some comments there and um, we'll go ahead and go start uh, some of the other monsters in the series and I think uh, I could cut down the time quite a bit and actually uh, show more painting and less talking. So with that, thanks again for tuning in to Pips and Chits and I hope you enjoyed my premiere episode. Thank you.